What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing some testing to try and answer whether an AGM battery is a worthy upgrade for our 4Runners, Tacomas, FJ Cruisers, and any vehicle really. We're gonna look at all the benefits of an AGM battery, the drawbacks, how to properly charge our AGM batteries using the Voltage Booster Pro, and we're gonna run some tests on my nearly four year old AGM battery to see how well it's performing after all these years of abuse. So stay tuned. So I have been running this Odyssey AGM battery in my 4Runner for nearly four years now. In those four years, I am happy to report that I have never, not once, experienced a dead battery. We have abused this battery. We have gone camping for days where my son leaves the doors open, so the interior lights are constantly coming on and off. And on top of that, I do have a parasitic battery drain, which actually many of you pointed out in one of my previous videos. Even with a parasitic battery drain though, I still come home to a vehicle that fires right up after being away for weeks at a time. So I'm definitely impressed with this battery, but they are expensive and not everyone has a great experience for reasons that I think we'll get into in this video. We'll cover that topic. Let's start off with what an AGM battery is and how it is supposedly better and then we'll get into some testing of the actual cold cranking amps after four years of ownership. I'll show you the proper charging behavior for AGM batteries. And finally, we'll do some before and after voltage tests to see how well our charger is working. All right, so AGM stands for absorbent glass mat. These fiberglass mats inside the AGM battery is what sets them apart from our conventional batteries. In a conventional or flooded battery, you basically have a plastic box that is filled with liquid acid. In between this acid, you have lead plates. If you shake these batteries, there is actually a sloshing effect as the liquid acid moves around. AGM batteries do not have this free fluid moving around inside of them. It is soaked into the fiberglass mats like a sponge. These mats are tightly packed between the plates allowing for many more plates inside the battery. Having more plates allows for more surface area and therefore better performance. These batteries have better capacity charge faster and because everything is tightly packed together AGM batteries are also more durable. Our conventional batteries do not like vibrations or impacts as the lead sheets can shift around and the acid's always moving. Having a better performing battery can also take some of the stress off our alternator when running light bars, winches, DC to DC chargers, etc. It helps stabilize the voltage draw basically providing a sort of discharge buffer. AGM batteries also have a longer life than conventional batteries if used and charged correctly. My Odyssey battery is advertised as actually having twice the overall power and three times the life of a conventional battery with 400 cycles at 80% depth of discharge. Could you imagine discharging a conventional battery 400 times to 20%? So these are some crazy claims. So we'll see how this stacks up in our test today. On top of the battery, we can see that the cold cranking amps are advertised at 850, whereas the stock conventional Panasonic battery that came standard with my 4Runner, this one was rated at 530 cranking amps. This stock Panasonic battery did a great job and lasted about four years with some abuse before it died and would no longer start the vehicle. So these batteries look great on paper, but let's talk about some drawbacks with AGM batteries. So the bad, they are expensive, almost double that of a conventional battery, but they can last twice as long, so maybe that is justifiable. Number two, they do need more volts to charge. So a voltage booster is needed or a special external charger, but you need to be careful as overcharging can also damage these batteries. They are a little bit sensitive. Three, they can weigh a bit more, but nothing super substantial. Okay, so I think you get the hype and some drawbacks with these batteries. So let's now jump into testing to see how mine is doing after four years of use. All right, so we're gonna do two tests here, one at 34 to 36 Fahrenheit, and then another at minus five to zero Fahrenheit. Let's start with test one. All right, let's start off by checking the temperature on this battery. So you guys do know that it is cold because we are doing cold cranking amps. So it is sitting at uh, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so we're now gonna check the cranking amps using this Top Done battery tester. I got this off of Amazon if you guys are interested in picking one of these up. I will leave a link in the description below. I did do a bunch of research and this one is has the best build quality and is the most uh, accurate for an Amazon battery tester. I will leave also a link to a cheaper one that is also well rated, but just doesn't have as good a build quality. All right, let's get this thing hooked up and let's test the cranking amps. All right, so once you get it connected, it will turn on. We'll hit enter. And I think we're gonna to go to battery test here. I just wanna make sure you guys can see the screen. Okay, great. So we'll go down to AGM flat plate because that's what this battery is. Hit enter on that. So we're gonna do the cold cranking amp test there. So we'll hit enter on that. And we're gonna program what the cold cranking amps of this battery is. 
I'm just gonna go up to 850. There we go, hit enter. Great, and now it's testing. All right, so we're at 603 cold cranking amps. Charge, it says it's at 100% because we're at 12.75 volts. Internal resistance is 4.1. So yeah, it says that the health is at 50% now for this battery, so. So the cold cranking amps on this is still higher than what our stock Forerunner battery is, the Panasonic, so. I mean, the vehicle turns over, it starts right up, but it is saying that the health is at about 50% now. It is coming in though as a good battery. Battery's still good to go for quite some time. I mean, by going with this battery, you definitely get some wiggle room as it kind of wears out. It's, it, you, you start off with a much better battery, I think, so you know you can use it for a lot longer. All right, so I really wanted to test this battery when it was cold, and I mean really cold. So I left it in the freezer overnight at minus 20 Celsius or zero Fahrenheit. All right, so we've had this battery in the freezer now for about 12 hours at zero Fahrenheit, minus 20 Celsius. So it's actually coming up on the screen there. I don't know if you can see that as minus five Fahrenheit. So, so this battery is pretty darn cold. You can see the frost forming on the terminals up there. All right, let's run the test. Yeah, so when it's really cold like this, now it's saying the cold cranking amps at 467, which I mean, that's a little bit lower than the 530 that you'd get with the you know, OEM Panasonic battery. But man, look at the voltage, still 12.78 volts. The internal resistance is still good too. As long as it's below seven, that's acceptable. So, I mean, this is saying replaced based on what this battery started out at in terms of health, but really this number would fire up the Forerunner no problem. So let's pop this battery in the Forerunner. Even with it being minus five Fahrenheit internally, I bet this battery will fire the Forerunner up, no issues. All right, so let's fire this thing up. I just put the battery back in. We're getting 10.9 there. So just like that, you can see the engine fired right up. No issues. Okay, let's quickly talk about the biggest mistake people make with these AGM batteries. People often buy these batteries thinking they can just install them in their vehicle and go. A lot of newer vehicles are now coming out with AGM batteries, but older vehicles like the one behind me weren't tuned from factory to charge these batteries correctly. So if we look at the Odyssey battery here in my vehicle, we'll see that the charging voltage range is 14.4 to 14.8. I actually contacted Odyssey myself to see what they said about the charging voltage. I'll show you that email now. So the factory Toyota service manual for my foreigner gives me a charging range of 13.2 to 14.8, but that upper limit will never be reached as I'm sure we will see later on in the video. Our Toyotas are known to sit more in the 13.2 to 13.8 voltage range when running. Unfortunately with AGM batteries, if their correct charging range is not maintained, the battery will get what's called sulfation. What is sulfation? Inside the battery, a chemical layer called lead sulfate forms on the plates every time we discharge the battery and fully charging the battery generally dissolves this lead sulfate. If the battery is undercharged, the lead sulfate hardens onto the plates, lowering the battery's ability to deliver strong bursts of power like when we're doing you know, are cranking our vehicle over, so our cold cranking amps. So it's really easy with our Toyotas to charge these batteries because we can actually trick our alternator to provide more power by installing a voltage booster. What this does is it changes the voltage sensing input and tricks the alternator into thinking the voltage is slightly lower, causing the vehicle to increase the voltage to the desired amount for our AGM battery. So I have the Voltage Booster Pro, which safely boosts the voltage while providing protection to the circuit with a fuse. Some people, and I am guilty of this, will put a GM diode in here and I would suggest getting the Voltage Booster Pro because it will protect that circuit with the fuse and the diode doesn't. So you're actually putting your vehicle at risk. So this is a great upgrade to actually charge your AGM battery correctly for our forerunners. All right, let's uh, jump into installing this Voltage Booster Pro. But actually, before we do that, let's test the voltage to see what our vehicle runs at without the voltage booster, then we'll put the voltage booster pro in and we'll see if we're getting that correct voltage for this AGM battery. Let's do that now. All right, so I'm using my scan gauge three to get the reading here. I do love this thing. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to check it out. So I program the voltage 
And then as I drove around town, I was getting anywhere from 13.2 to 13.8 volts. Never did I get into the 14.4 to 14.8 that the battery requires. So your voltage booster will come with a bunch of information in the pamphlet. There's two different ways to install the voltage booster depending on which model you have. So if you have a 2020 to 2022 fifth gen 4Runner, there's a different location here. If you have a little bit of an older fifth gen 4Runner, so you're looking at 2010 to 2020, you'll be installing it in the front. So I'll show you under the hood how we're going to install this now. All right, so to install the voltage booster, what we'll do is we'll pop open our relay and fuse box here. All right, so under this cover, we'll have our fuse puller, which is right here. And because this Forerunner is a 2017, we're gonna be removing this fuse right here, this 7.5 amp fuse. It's between the 20 and the 15. So use that fuse puller, pull that sucker out. Great, so we got it there. We're gonna pop that fuse into the voltage booster. Great, so we got that fuse in there. And now we're gonna pop the voltage booster into that spot where that 7.5 amp fuse was. And look how nicely that just sits in there. And we can turn that switch up and down. Now we're gonna keep it on low because low is kind of the set it, forget it setting. You'd only really wanna run high if you know you're, you have some high, high draw accessories going or you're trying to you know, power this battery up really high before you get to camp. Now we can put our fuse puller back in and we'll pop this cover back on. All right, so with the Voltage Booster Pro installed, we do have the voltage that we want here. So we're at 14.4 to 14.8 as we're driving around town. Then when the battery is fully charged and the vehicle's warmed up, it'll go anywhere from like 13.7 to 13.8, but usually it will stay as you're driving around in the 14.4 and up range. All right, so what are my thoughts on the AGM battery after owning it for four years and after putting it through torture? My feeling is that the AGM battery isn't an invincible battery. It does degrade like every other battery, but you're just starting off with a much better battery to begin with. You know, you have 850 cold cranking amps to begin with. You have double the reserve capacity. So basically the energy storage is double. Um, and then over time it degrades. So it's kind of degraded down to, and just a little bit below what the brand new OEM Panasonic battery would be for the fifth gen 4Runner. So is it worth paying double what a flooded battery costs. For me, it is because I'm out doing adventures and I really do not want a dead battery. We're constantly going in and out of the car, tons of accessories. So it's worth it for me. It might not be worth it for everybody. You know, if you're just commuting around town, do you really want to be installing a voltage booster, putting an AGM battery in? Maybe it's worth it for you. I think for the average person, if they did use an AGM battery around town without a parasitic battery drain like I have and without the constant torture of the battery and high temperatures and constant drain, I think you would get, you know, six years, seven years out of this battery. I personally think I might get five to six. It's been four now. I think I could run this battery for another year if I really wanted to, maybe another year after that. So maybe an additional two years, maybe I can get six years out of this. I'll probably replace it in a year just because I want it to be, you know, in its top condition all the time. Like I said, I don't want to get stranded and have to boost my vehicle with like a NOCO um, booster or something like that. So let me know in the comment section if you think an AGM battery is worth it for you, your experiences with them. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I hope to come up with a lot more fifth generation 4Runner content and I do always appreciate your guys' support. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye now.